Jamie Bell, uh, you star in Film Stars Don't Die in Liverpool as Peter Turner, who uh, fell in love with uh, film actress Gloria Graham. Uh, now, this is a true story. Uh, were you familiar with the story before you took part in the film? No, not at all. Uh, I'd never heard of Gloria Graham. Uh, I'd certainly never heard of uh, Peter Turner. Uh, I think when I read it for the first time, I, I uh, genuinely thought that it was a, a, a piece of fiction. Honestly, uh, just a bizarre um, subject to set a film around. Uh, it was when I learned that Barbara Broccoli, our producer, uh, who, uh, you know, she, she'd been trying to make the film for about 23 years, uh, told me that she knew Gloria Graham and, and Peter Turner personally. She'd known them when they were together. Uh, and she handed me the memoir on which it's based. Um, just all the truth just came flooding into it. Um, and I think when I, whenever anything is based... On, on truth and it's a real story and it really happened. I think it, um, it elevates the material and I think it elevates the people who are involved. Uh, I'm very passionate about it uh, and that's certainly the case with our film. Uh, what uh, in particular uh, attracted you to the role of, of Peter Turner when, when you first read the script and, and you thought made you really want to play this role? Well, Peter is a character who really kind of goes through the gamut of emotion. Uh, it really is a, a role um, to do and explore kind of all sides of romance and uh, all kind of uh, all the complications that come with that. Um, so the role in itself was really juicy. Uh, there was like lots of scenes um, that I was really excited to get to do and stuff that was going to challenge me in a way that I hadn't really been challenged before. Uh, so, the, But the role aside, it was more the opportunity that the film presented to work with someone um, of a next caliber, uh, to really go toe-to-toe -to -toe with, with an incredibly talented, established actress. Um, and really challenge myself in that way. That was really the... Now, uh, you're not only uh, playing uh, a real person who, who is uh, still living, but uh, uh, Turner was uh, yeah, actually also involved uh, uh, during the production of the film. Uh, how closely did you work with him uh, to portray him and, and his story, of course, it's so close to him personally? Uh, I mean, I talked to him a lot. I talked to him a lot of the time, you know, for hours on end. Uh, and um, and he was so generous with his with his time and with his memories and with his recollections of his time together with this woman. But um, in so many ways, it was still so fresh for him. You know, it just because he's a storyteller and an actor in his own right. Uh, whenever I would ask him these things about her, he would really kind of relive it, uh, and you could see it in his his face. Even just after a few hours, he would look exhausted, uh, just kind of going through everything over again and living it so many times. Um, but it's daunting, you know, it's daunting playing a real guy uh, who existed and is still with us and who's so heavily involved because, you know, they're right in front of you <laughs> a lot of the time. And, uh, and it's kind of nerve wracking, you know, this is, this story to him is probably the most important thing that's ever happened to him. It's certainly the thing that has kind of defined him the most. And I think to this day, he's still trying to kind of uh, understand it, understand what it was, why she called him when she was sick, why she couldn't tell him initially that she was sick, you know, uh, why she fell in love with him. All those questions still brew in his mind, really. Um, so, you know, I, 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 just, I, I just wanted to get the love story right and do that justice because I feel like... Um, he loves her so much, even to this day. And uh, if we didn't get that right, then we would have failed and I would have failed him. Uh, but he's invaluable. You know, he really was in the project and his grace to step back and allow that and I to share love his story was, um, was great. Now, uh, you know, uh, Turner isn't as publicly well known as uh, Glory Graham, who, you know, an Oscar winning actress. Uh, you know, what did you most want to capture uh, about? who he is and, and who he was at, at the time of his life. What, what do you hope audiences take away about him in particular? Uh, you know, I think that this is a character who, uh, um, you know, he comes from a, a working class town in England. Uh, he wanted to do something slightly different with his life. He had all these creative ambitions and I'm not sure how many uh, others in his family had those similar ambitions. I think in some ways he was the kind of black sheep of the family. And he stumbled across someone like Gloria who really saw him 
she really saw him for who he was and uh, saw his spirit and saw, uh, you know, identified him and understood him. And I think that he was really searching for that. Um, and he really found it in a, in a big way. Um, but Peter Turner to me is, is uh, someone who says yes to any and all experiences. If there's an open door, he'll walk through it. If there's an offer to come in and go dance and drink with someone, he'll do it like they do in the film, you know. Uh, uh, Peter Turner and, you know, by extension, his family, I would say, are the, the very definition of good, decent human beings doing the right thing. Um, I think this film was also set in a time when uh, things were just much more pure. We didn't have massive distraction like uh, social media. We didn't have... We didn't have IMDb, so that we would know everything already about each other before we would meet. Or it was very easy to obtain that information. These two people just collided, and met, and uh, fell in love with each other, and in love with all of their flaws. Uh, and I think that that is an incredibly uh, pure story. It's a story without judgment, uh, and it's a story of love. So I hope that um, that resonates with people at least for his character because Peter very, very much embodies all of them. Uh, you mentioned uh, the, the scene where uh, 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 Gloria and Peter meet uh, and they drink and they dance together. Uh, yeah, was that the first scene uh, that you and Annette Benning shot? Cool. No. Can you imagine if it was though? <laughs> that, would be, that would be interesting. Uh, no, it wasn't the first scene, uh, but certainly I uh, had drawn a circle around that scene. Uh, uh, because obviously the rest of the film has some heavier points and some more kind of somber moments. Uh, uh, certainly Annette has a lot to do as she contracts this disease and is kind of deteriorating. Uh, that moment in the, in the schedule was such an, a, a massive uplift to, to us and to the whole crew, really, just a chance to just let loose for a second and just have some fun. Um, I, I was genuinely uh, YouTubing uh, Saturday Night Fever clips in my trailer about three minutes before. We went and did that. Uh, and we didn't do it that many times. We didn't rehearse it. We shot it like two or three times. It was great. We had a great, great laugh. You were doing a lot of rehearsing beforehand on, you know, just, you know, private, uh, uh, you know, dancing and, and trying to figure out, get, get the steps just right. I just wanted to, you know, cause I was like, well, it has to be period appropriate, you know, because they were like, they'd asked us, do you want like a, a choreographer? And Annette was like, no, 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 we'll just make it up. So I was like, oh, okay, she's, she's confident. Uh, we'll, we'll see how this goes. And then, uh, uh, you know, I was, I was like, I don't know what those moves were from, from the day. I, I, I was never a disco dancer myself. I'd never been really heavily into disco. So I was like, if I'm going to look up anyone, it's going to be John Travolta. So I just looked up all the dance scenes individually on YouTube, studied them, and like danced them in, in the mirror in my trailer. And then uh, just took it all out to the, to the dance floor on the set and, and did it. It was great. We had a great time. Uh, what was uh, P uh, Peter Turner's reaction to the the finished film uh, and and your performance uh, when he saw the whole thing put together? Uh, I wasn't I wasn't actually there the the first time that he saw it, but I was told that he kind of had to be, you know, picked up from his chair because he was just kind of a weeping mess. Uh, I did see him after the screening in Toronto at the film festival there, and he was hugging Annette and I and you know, and just saying, thank you, thank you, thank you. And he was crying. Um, you know, it's a big deal for him. I mean, I think not only to have lived it, but then to not really understand it. So then he didn't intend to write a book at all. That wasn't his intention. It just, he said he just sat down one day and started writing. I didn't know that she was sick until she got to Lancaster. Uh, and it just kind of poured out of him. And if you ever read the book, it is very fragmented, very abstract and, and, and surreal. It just comes out one page he's in Liverpool you turn the page and he's walking down the street in Beverly Hills and you're kind of thinking well hang on a second I missed something um but that is very much how memories work they're 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 loose they're not necessarily connected to anything or they're connected to something that's incredibly abstract uh and the film is very much like that so I think for him to have lived it to have written this book and and, and the catharsis of that and then to uh you know then see it portrayed on the screen and have to kind of relive everything all over again, I think must be very overwhelming, you know. Uh, but he did send me a very, very sweet uh, email about it and uh, 
you know, I think he's he's very happy with the film. He's very happy with the way that Gloria Graham is depicted, because you know, I think in many ways he is her guardian. Now, uh, Peter Turner wasn't uh, very familiar with Gloria Graham when he met her. Uh, did, did you yourself, in, in playing Peter, uh, 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 watch uh, Gloria's films uh, before you know preparing for it, or did you kind of want to go in kind of blind in in a sense the way he does? Yeah, I mean, I wanted to replicate that. I didn't want to go in having any kind of uh, connection with her or, or kind of even even just kind of loose understandings of what she was known for, the kind of film she was known for. Uh, I did watch In a Lonely Place because I heard that that one was a, just a great movie and she, that she was great in it. So I did watch that one. It's the only one I did see before I started. But yeah, I really did want to kind of just, you know, replicate the feeling of what Peter would have went through. The other thing is, is that, you know, I didn't know Annette Benning before we started making this film and she's a phenomenal star and I know so much about her and, and her work. And uh, really the, the two kind of stories are kind of mirroring one another all the time, like me as, as Jamie and, and me as Peter, you know. Uh, but I, I, I certainly didn't want to have any kind of connections or understanding of glory before I started. And I'm glad I, I didn't actually because I've since a bunch of stuff, and I think it would have changed my uh, my perspective on her a little bit. Now, uh, it is a somewhat unconventional romance uh, because of you know the age difference. Um, uh, you know, what do you think made them both so drawn to each other so instantly and 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 so strongly? Uh, they they both gave each other. Uh, they fulfilled each other's needs. Uh, Gloria at that time in her life, I think, had been in so many romantic entanglements with people uh, that ended very turbulently. Uh, they had a lot of conflict, usually would end in divorce a lot of the time. And um, what she found in Peter Turner was someone who just would unconditionally love her. He didn't judge her. Uh, he wasn't interested in her history, really. Um, he was interested in, in, in the person in front of him. And I think she needed that. She needed to be loved on a profoundly deep level. She needed it. Uh, and the same with Peter. He, he needed to be seen. He needed to be understood. He needed to, you know, have um, these experiences. He needed to be educated. He needed to, you know, have doors open for him. Um, I think those are two very profound things, you know, to, to the, the, just the feeling of being understood or being seen or being noticed who you really are and, and the idea of acceptance that they both have of one another uh, uh, without judgment. Um, I think they're all, they're all things that I think everyone is looking for, you know, and I, I think we do find it. Um, so that, that's the reason why. I also think on another level, they were incredibly attracted to each other. I think there was something profoundly physical <clears throat> that they shared together. And I think they both just loved having fun really. They both liked kind of getting into trouble and, uh, you know, um, having fun together as well. Uh, the, the romance is uh, also unique in that, uh, you know, both Peter and Gloria are, are open with each other about uh, being bisexual, uh, and bisexual characters are often underrepresented uh, in film and TV. Uh, did you feel that was uh, an important aspect uh, to convey about, you know, who they were and who they were to each other in their relationship? I think it's, uh, it's, I don't think it's necessarily important uh, that, you know, that the character is bisexual. What I think that it, what it's doing is saying, um, you know, as I said just a second ago, is, is that they're so accepting of one another. They could really apparently share anything with each other without fear, without worry that, you know, they would be judged or there would be, you know, any kind of consequence. Um, I think that Peter Turner is clearly someone who, who leads with his heart, first and foremost, and, and, and uh, you know, has had relationships uh, with men and women. He's in a relationship with a man now, a very loving relationship of many years. Um, you know, so I, I, I don't think it's necessarily a commentary, commentary on sexuality as it is as much as, a, you know, a demonstration of just how much these people uh, have empathy for one another and understanding of one another and uh, and just a lack of judgment, you know. And I love that, I mean, I really do. I think it's, it's such an important element of, of love and being in love uh, is acceptance of the person you're with. Uh, 
but I, I think that's 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 what there, that was there too. But it's true. I mean, that is a conversation that really happened between them. I know that for a fact. It's in the book. Uh, I would say about ninety-eight percent of what's in is in the film. It really happened. <clears throat> Now, uh, yeah, in addition to working with uh, uh, Annette Benning in the film, the f it also reunites you with uh, your Billy Elliot co-star, uh, Julie Walters, who, who plays your mother in this film. Yes. Uh, what was it like working with her again after all these years? Well, <clears throat> thankfully, I'm about three inches taller than Annette, so that's a, a great start for me. Uh, Julie's a wonderful actress. I didn't really realize at the time when I worked with her when I was a kid just how beloved she is, uh, certainly in England, especially in England, I would say. I mean, she's beloved all over the world, but certainly in England, there is, there is this feeling that she is kind of like family, that people know her, that she's like some kind of distant relative, you know. Uh, there's this guy called Stephen Graham who's in the film. He plays my brother. Uh, and if you're not familiar with his work, Stephen Graham is someone who is predominantly known for uh, playing criminal types, um, dangerous, kind of aggressive, very masculine type characters. Uh, and he was so nervous to meet Julie Walters, who he loved and had admired since he was a kid, you know, was literally reduced to like a, a, a shaking schoolboy when he met Julie for the first time. And she has that effect on people. She really does. She is this kind of national treasure. Um, and to see her work, now as an adult and to share scenes with her and to see just how talented she is and just how quickly she can kind of turn it on. Uh, it was lovely. It was really great to be, you know, reunited with her. Now, uh, in general, uh, you know, you've had a, an extremely varied career uh, since Billy Elliot, uh, you know, with a wide, a variety of wide ranging films, you know, everything from Jane Eyre to Snowpiercer to Nymphomaniac. Uh, what do you look for uh, when, when choosing roles? Usually the director is the thing, uh, you know, like everyone you just mentioned, I think they're all great filmmakers, you know, Lars von Trier, Kerry Fukunaga and Bong Joon-ho are all people who, uh, um, they're just very driven visionary filmmakers, you know, who elevate the material that they're working on, um, you know, so, and, and you know, in, in certain cases, you know, like Kerry and, and Lars, well, all of them, I mean, they're all just experimental, they want to push things as far as they can go and, uh, so that first and foremost is everything. And then, uh, you know, if the, if the character is kind of in some respects close to who I am as a human being, but then also totally far away from who I am as a human being, um, uh, then it presents this challenge. And, uh, as long as there's a challenge there, it's worth it. You know? But, uh, my career is really like a pinball machine. I mean, it really makes no sense at all. It's very strange and abstract, I suppose. Well, it's uh, definitely going to, uh, uh, you know, save you. you. There's, I don't think there's any possible way to typecast you at this point. No, I wouldn't know. No, I mean, like, when I think about it, you know, this year, I, there's another film I was in this year called Six Days, which is about the, the, the siege on the Iranian embassy in London in 1980. And uh, I play, like, an SAS squad leader which is a role that I never thought I would play, you know, from Billy Elliot all the way to an SAS squad leader. Uh, yeah, I don't know how that happened, but it's good in a way. I mean, it's good that no one really, uh, you know, when you think of me, well, it's, that's not true. Because when you do think of me, you think of a kid who's dancing down the street. That's what you think of. <laughs> so I don't know, but I've been very fortunate, I suppose, that I've been able to play different things and different periods and, you know, all kinds of things. So I'm very... Very grateful that I've been able to, to do that. Uh, well, I want to uh, congratulate you on uh, uh, Film Stars Don't Die in Liverpool, um, which, uh, you know, uh, I believe is open in, in, in England now and will be opening uh, soon in the United States. Uh, yeah, and, and, and thank yeah. you so much for talking to me today. I appreciate your time, man. Thank you very much.